This week on Phone a Friend, Michael B. Jordan is in his underwear. That's it. That's the headline. Shakira is going full she-wolf on her cheating husband, and I am here for her whenever, wherever. Plus, I phone a tween to explain why Hailey Bieber hates Selena Gomez, and our conversation makes me feel elderly. Wow, you should get an award four days without social media. You're a saint. Let's get this party started. Sorry, that is not a thing I should say. This show is going to slap, y'all. Oh my God, I hate myself. I need help from this tween immediately. Let's begin. Girl, let's phone a friend with Jesse. Crookshake. Hello, and welcome to Phone a Friend. I'm Jesse Crookshake. Isn't this fun? Are we having fun yet? Like, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing and reviewing and for your five-star reviews. Thank you for DMing me your Ariana DeBose adjacent videos at all hours of the day. I have received and watched every single one. I am sliving for it. I do have to apologize if I sound off today. I've been a little under the weather for the past four and a half years. Ever since my twins started at preschool, I've been sick. Like a friend recently canceled plans on me and she said, sorry, Jess, I can't do dinner tonight. I'm not feeling 100%. Honey, I haven't been feeling 100% since 2017, okay? It's called being a parent. I was hoping that I would just get like a sexy rasp for you. Like this would be like a Scarlett Johansson voice. But no, it's just Jesse Crookshank with nasal congestion. So my apologies in advance. Before we get to sexier things, like Michael B. Jordan in his underpants. I need to address something that I posted that caused quite a controversy this past weekend. So I reposted a video from my husband Evan's page of my five-year-old son, Rio, explaining the plot of Cocaine Bear. As you do, I'm going to play it for you. These guys have a chemical and they're on an airplane and they're too scared uh, that the guys are going to get them, so they drop the chemical in the woods and the bear eats it and he goes crazy. <laughs> okay, so we post that. Evan's DMs are filled with messages like, bro, you let your kids see cocaine bear? You're a legend. My DMs are flooded with messages like, you let your son see cocaine bear? You're an unfit mother. And I just want to be clear. I need to get it all out here. My five-year-old son did not see Cocaine Bear, okay? He thinks Encanto is too scary. There's a very simple explanation here, and that is billboard culture. So we live in Los Angeles where there are billboards everywhere. Like every 20 meters, my Canadian is showing, every 20 meters, there is a new billboard for TV and movies. And because in LA, you spend so much time in your car, my kids are constantly seeing billboards. Billboards for Scream, for American Horror Story, for Cocaine Bear. And at their age, they want to know what every single billboard says. What is the movie about? What is the show about? They need to know everything. And because I try to be honest with my children as much as possible, I am constantly faced with this challenge of explaining plots of, like, American Horror Story to my five-year-olds. For the last season of American Horror Story, just recently, there were billboards everywhere of, like, bloody contortionists in dominatrix outfits all over the neighborhood. And I had to be like, well, that, honey, is a show about people who like to do gymnastics in leathers. So they know the vague plots of everything, but they haven't seen anything. And to prove this to all the angry people in my DMs, I have brought Rio into my studio. Hi, Rio. Hi, Mommy. Rio, please confirm for the listeners at home, did you see the movie Cocaine Bear in theaters? No. No. So how do you know so much about it? Because you told me. Right, because I told you, and you asked because you saw the... Billboard. Exactly. That's all I need from you, Rio. Thank you for your time. Bye, Mommy. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury in my DMs, that is Exhibit A. I assure you, my kids are not watching R-rated movies. They are watching weird videos of monkeys unboxing Kinder Eggs on YouTube, as they should be. Anyway, I hear Cocaine Bear is great. Let's get to some hard-hitting news. It's been a week. It's been a week. Yeah. So last week, as 
the loyal listeners of this podcast know, Angela Bassett did the thing. And now the thing has been done. Okay, in less than a week, we put a nice big pin in things when Angela Bassett won Entertainer of the Year at the NAACP Image Awards this past weekend. And the first thing she said was this. I guess Angela Bassett did the thing. I know she said this because 150 of you DM'd me that clip. And for that, my friends, my phone of friends, can I call you that? I am truly grateful. I feel like we're forging meaningful relationships on this pod. So the next night, Ariana DeBose made fun of herself presenting an award with Diego Luna. When it was time for him to announce the nominees, she said this. Diego, do the thing. So that's it. We put a little bow on it. And I'm kind of bummed. I thought we'd at least get a reference at the Oscars, but I guess me playing the clip 12 times during my last episode really helped put a nail in the coffin for this bit. So ladies and gentlemen, for the last time, Angela Bassett did the thing. (sighs) That felt good. Now sit back, relax, and slip into something more comfortable for my favorite segment of the podcast, Calling All Thirsty Moms. Calling all thirsty moms. Mm, 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 mm. Michael B. Jordan is the new face of Calvin Klein underwear, and by face I mean bulge. He is the new bulge of Calvin Klein. He is following in the bulge steps of Mark Wahlberg, Justin Bieber, and if you haven't seen the photos, look them up on your phone right now. I'll wait. I'm waiting. Did you Google Michael B. Jordan? Bulge, Michael B. Jordan, shirtless, Michael B. Just any of those will work. Pull them up. These pictures are so fine that he had to apologize publicly to his mother for the photos. MBJ said he had to call his mom to say sorry for his, quote, business being all out in the streets, literally. And his business is all out in the streets, but mostly in my search history. That's where the business is. So he's promoting Creed 3, and suddenly I'm into boxing movies. And I'm not going to be taking my children to see Creed 3, okay? Don't worry. Don't get up in the DMs. Because I'm going to see Creed 3 alone. That's mommy's time. I should tell you, I have interviewed Michael B. Jordan on a red carpet once. One of the hottest people I have seen IRL. Okay, for real. The hottest, sexiest, like, men that are absolutely oozing sex appeal men that I have ever been in the presence of are, drumroll please, Drake. I know. I'm so sorry. Drake walked past me at an event once and I like almost, my legs almost buckled underneath me. Okay. Then Michael B. Jordan. And then this is a wacky one. Daniel Craig. I know, I'm not even into him on screen, but IRL, oh my God. There is like a swagger. There is a, I, I, I was, I could barely form words while speaking to Daniel Craig. It's an in-person thing. You got to trust me on this. So this week at the premiere of Creed, Michael B. Jordan came face to face with his high school bully and he called her out live on camera. Have you seen this? So she's a radio host. Her name is L'Oreal. She reminded him that they went to high school together. Michael B. was like, oh, I'm well aware. Immediately called her out for calling him the corny kid in high school. Listen carefully to this. And, you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? (laughs) No, I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. No, No, you did not hear me say corny. I said we used to make fun of the name. Well, you're not corny anymore. (laughs) If you watch this, he is so clearly unimpressed with her. It's wild. Poor L'Oreal has since given more context. She said, quote, we teased him all the damn time because his name was Michael Jordan. Fair. He also would come to school with a headshot. We would make fun of him like, what are you going to do with your stupid headshot? And now look at him. Yes, L'Oreal, we have been looking at him a lot in a small pair of Calvin Klein underpants. Now, some people don't think it was fair for an A-list movie star to call out this radio host on a red carpet, but I do. I think part of the reason people work to get famous is so that they can have a fuck you moment with their childhood bully. That's the dream. It's not about money or fame. It's about getting revenge on the people who tormented you as a child. (laughs) Maybe I'm speaking for myself. Maybe this is my own 
theory. But when I uh, first started at MTV, I was like, I fucking made it. Here I am. I'm on television. I also really didn't have uh, like a real sense of comprehension that what I was saying to the camera was actually going out for people in the world to see. So one day the topic of bullying came up and I talked about my childhood bully. Shoot, we should bleep that. Can we bleep her name? Okay, we'll bleep her name because this is what got me in trouble. I said her first and last name. She tormented me in elementary school. I, I talked about it on MTV, didn't think anything of it, said her full name. And a week later, I got an email to my like public MTV address from that said, she didn't appreciate me saying that. It was really upsetting. And as a result of me talking about how she was a bully, she was fired from her job at the tanning salon. I felt so bad. But um, for the record, she married a very wealthy man. And from what I've heard, she's doing great. So maybe getting fired from the tanning salon because of me was for the best. Again, my sincere apologies to... And my sincere thank you to Michael B. Jordan in his Calvins. And that is Calling All Thirsty Moms. Calling All Thirsty Moms. Okay, can we talk about Shakira? (laughs) I haven't talked about Shakira leaving her husband on this show yet, and I've been dying to. So she just gave a new interview trashing the girl who stole her husband. And here's why I can't get enough of this story. Because as an elder millennial, thank you, who is married with children. I don't relate so much to like an Olivia Rodrigo singing songs about breaking up with her high school sweetheart the day she got her driver's license. Like, you think that's heartbreak, honey? That's not heartbreak. Real heartbreak is when your partner of 12 years, father of your two children, cheats on you with someone half your age and leaves your family high and dry. That is heartbreak, bitch. That's how I feel. And that's what Shakira experienced when her husband, hot professional soccer player Gerard Piquet, am I pronouncing that right? Piquet, left her for a 23-year-old student. A student. I get like rage tingles, like Beyonce and Lemonade. I'm like, give me a baseball bat. I will smash cars on Shakira's behalf. I get so mad because I am a grown married woman and this is the kind of shit that gets me all fired up. So if you haven't been following the story like I have in a fit of rage, apparently she knew he was cheating because she's the only one in her family who likes jam. And when she came back from tour, she noticed that they were low on jam. That's when she was like, his hips are lying. Thank you. So I'm just saying everybody clock, like all my married ladies out there, clock that one thing that you like that no one else in your family does and just watch that shit, okay? Because if my tofu bacon is suddenly gone, Evan is deaf having an affair. So did Shakira handle this matter privately, gracefully? Absolutely not. She handled this matter like you should when you're a 45-year-old icon, mother, global superstar, and your husband has left you for a fucking student. She put out a diss track in Spanish, which I had my Spanish-speaking husband, who is not cheating on me as far as I know, translate. Um, She says, I'm too good for you, and that's why you're with someone just like you. Yes. I wish you good luck with my supposed replacement. Uh Uh-huh. I'm worth two of your 22-year-old. Yes, bitch. You traded a Ferrari for a Twingo. You traded a Rolex for a Casio. (laughs) Yes. These men, these Jay-Zs, these Gerard PKs, when they cheat on these beautiful, successful, powerful partners with 20-year-olds, it's because they aren't man enough to be with a woman who is more powerful than they are. You should see my fingers wagging right now. I have two fingers. Both pointer fingers are just going absolutely ape. I get all fired up. These men that need to feel like they're a big, successful man by having an affair with like a young student, that's on them. Okay, but now Shakira is blaming the woman. So a couple of days ago, she said in an interview that she's come out stronger, we love, And quote, there is a special place in hell for women who don't support women. I don't disagree. I don't think it's necessarily the woman's 
fault? Like, I'm sure he told her he was single. She's 22. She's a student. This very handsome, successful, rich athlete approaches her. I think this is the 36-year-old father's fault. He's the one who's at fault here. He made the choice to blow up his family. That is always the man's fault. But I have been cheated on before. And you better believe I took all of my wrath out on the other woman, okay? I was ready to carry Underwood her car. I had, like, memorized every dumb photo on her dumb Facebook page. I was ready to, like, plot her murder. So I understand and I appreciate the anger and rage that Shakira feels towards this woman. I get it. And... I just love that she's being so public about it. I love that she is not ashamed to talk about how hurtful it is, how messy it is, because anyone else who has gone through the same thing can relate. So thank you, Shakira. You are forever and always the Rolex. And he, by the way, he is the Casio. He is not even a Casio. He is a damn swatch. All right, let's move on like Shakira did. What's next? Okay, this is a quick feel-good story. So this past weekend, Chance the Rapper got on a plane with his four-year-old daughter, Kensley. And when they realized they weren't seated together, Martin Short offered up his seat. So Chance tweeted this. He wrote, So I just got on this plane with my daughter and found out our seats weren't next to each other. I really ain't want to inconvenience anyone by asking them to swap seats. But before I could say anything, this kind older gentleman offered his seat to Kensley so we could sit together. We both said thank you, and as he stands up, I realize it's the Martin Short. So cool, and Kensley freaked out because she's obsessed with the Santa Claus 3. What an awesome person. Shout out to Jack Frost. (laughs) End tweet. First of all, I just, I love that comedy icon legend Martin Short is being recognized for his work in the Santa Claus 3. (laughs) I also just love that he gave up his seat so a kid could sit with her dad because my dirty, shameful secret is that I never pay for seats when I fly with my kids. I am very cheap to my core through and through, and I save the $32 per seat because I know that when I board my plane with two five-year-olds, people will move. Like, No one is going to want to sit next to them alone. I know that. It's worth the risk. I have literally said to flight attendants, "Uh, my child can't wipe his own bum, so ideally we can be sat together. Works every time. And that's a parenting tip, by the way. Parenting tip. Don't pay for the seats. Trust that when you walk on board with terribly behaved children, people will move. Should I write a parenting book? Anyway, love Martin Short. We'll have to check out his work in The Santa Claus 3. Is that what he won an Oscar for? No? Okay. Here's something else I love. I love a good old-fashioned celebrity feud. Okay, Kanye versus Taylor, James Corden versus that restaurant. I'm here for it. But there's a current internet feud happening right now between Hailey Bieber and Selena Gomez. And no matter how hard I try, I cannot understand what it's all about. I don't get it. So obviously, Selena Gomez was with Justin Bieber for seven years. They broke up, and he married Hailey Bieber two months later. Yikes. But I thought we're all good now. Like, we found God. We took pictures together at an event. We're good. Apparently, we're not, because this week I'm seeing all these headlines about this reignited feud, and I'm too busy to keep up with it. And whenever I try to dive in, it's very TikTok heavy, which makes me feel dumb. And that's why I'm calling this segment Dumb and Busy. busy. This is where I dive into stories I don't understand because I'm dumb and busy. Anyone else? Okay. I'm going to try to break down what I do understand. So Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber are allegedly feuding online again because one of them had bad eyebrows and then the other one made fun of the eyebrows and then posted cryptic song lyrics on TikTok and then took that video down and then someone deleted TikTok and then Taylor Swift got dragged into things that Justin Bieber's mom was liking tweets and I'm sorry, can I get a drink? I don't care that I'm on antibiotics. It needs to be strong. I don't understand any of this. And that is precisely why I created this show, so that in desperate times like this, I get to phone a friend. Today, I'm going to call someone smart, someone savvy, someone young. I am calling a tween to explain this feud and so much more to me once and for all. It's time to phone a friend. Girl, 
Let's phone a friend. Okay, I'm calling a young lady named Harper. She is 10 years old. She lives in California. She should probably be at school, but this was clearly more important. Hello? Hi, Harper. Hi. I just want to say thank God you took my call because I have an urgent Bieber-related matter to discuss. So first, I just want to go over your credentials. You are a tween, correct? Yep. So what year were you born? I was born in, like, early 2013. Oh, my God. You are younger than all five Twilight movies. Yes. Do you even know what those are? No, I just hear, like, parents talking about them. Oh, okay. Yeah. What year do you think I was born, Harper? I'm going to say, like, 1982. 1982? Yeah. Is that, like, the dark ages to you? I don't know. It's a bizarre, in the olden days, essentially. Yes. So today you are going to serve as the voice of your generation, representing all young people worldwide. Are you comfortable with that? Of course. Perfect. And as the voice of all old people, I'd like to say thank you. So I'm giving you the floor, Harper. Please explain to me what is happening right now with Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber. All righty. So this drama has been like going off for like ever. So I'm just going to talk about the main details that I've heard about. I love it. So I kind of also, to put it into some context, as you all know, Hailey Bieber, Justin Bieber, they're married. But Selena Gomez used to be, Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber used to be like teenage lovebirds. Right. So, and Hailey Bieber would always comment on their posts like, oh my gosh, you guys are so beautiful. What a great couple. And what do you know now they're married? So... That's that's kind of funny. Uh-huh. So to go into the drama... Please. For me, it all started whenever uh, Selena Gomez posted um, um, a post that she showed her eyebrows wherever they got laminated and saying, like, this is not how I wanted them to turn out, blah, blah, blah. And then she posts a photo of her in a bikini, and basically people are kind of, like, body shaming her. And, th- and after that post came out and all that drama was done with... Uh Apparently, Hailey Bieber and her friends made a TikTok video saying, like, like to a TikTok sound. I can't even remember the sound. It was, like, such a small little video. But then people took this TikTok as something related to the Selena Gomez bikini shot, which was insane to me because it was just a dumb TikTok post. The internet slash media is just trying to blow this whole thing up. Oh, the internet slash media. I know. And they made a post. Their post was something like that said, like, she got what she deserved. Right. So people thought yeah. that they were talking about the body shaming that Selena experienced. OK, go on. Yeah. OK, so to go on. And then, as you remember, whenever I first talk about the laminated eyebrows. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. What is a laminated eyebrow? I honestly, I honestly don't even know. I guess people just like trying to make their eyebrows look better and stuff. Which is just kind of dumb because it's an eyebrow. (laughs) Like, it's an eyebrow, people. Come on. Okay, so the laminated eyebrows. Selena Gomez complains about her laminated eyebrows, whatever the hell that is. And then we see a post from who? Kylie Jenner just had to post a photo of her and Hailey Bieber, supposedly Hailey Bieber, on FaceTime showing their eyebrows. Oh, So people thought that that was shade at Selena's laminated eyebrow post. Yep. Okay, I'm with you, Harper. This all seems really dumb, but continue. Yeah, and then apparently right whenever um, Selena Gomez beat Kylie Jenner in Instagram followers, she Uh. decides to take a break from social media for her mental health. And people are like, good for you, a two-month break, congratulations. What do you know? Four days later, she comes back. Hi, guys, I'm back. Here's a photo of me with a margarita. (laughs) This is Selena Gomez. This is Selena Gomez. Right, so she takes a break and comes back four days later with a margarita. Yeah, like, wow, you should get an award four days without social media. (laughs) You're you're a saint. (laughs) Oh, my God. So wait, whose team are you on, Harper? I'm not on any side. I think this whole thing is stupid. Like, I'm actually dealing with Mean Girls at high school, and this is just internet dumb drama that, like, it's just crazy to me. It's literally all about eyebrows. Ugh. 
Like, who cares about eyebrows? I mean, you will one day, but I mean, I feel like I may or may not be more confused than before, but at least we've discussed the drama. We can sleep at night. I want to move on because you didn't think I was going to call the youngest person in my Rolodex, which is an old lady word for contacts, without getting you to fill me in on all the other things I don't understand in pop culture. Did you, Harper? No. Okay, good. Because I literally talked about S Club 7 a few weeks ago. Do you know who they are? Nope. Okay, so I have work to do. I want to dig in. I do something on this show called What's the Hot Shit? Pardon my swearing. So today I want to do the first ever What's the Hot Shit tween edition. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, totally. What's that hot shit? Okay, so I'll ask you what is hot in different categories. You fill in the blank. Here we go. All righty. What is the hot show? Oh, the hot shows are definitely, people are definitely into like, horrors on like Netflix. So people are definitely watching Stranger Things and Wednesday. That is definitely like everyone's all about that. Ooh, I still haven't watched Wednesday. Are you mad at me? Yes, very. Okay. Who's the hot guy? Tom Holland. Definitely Tom Holland. Tom Holland? Like Spider-Man? Yes. Peter Parker? Oh, I know who that is. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. But he's dating Zendaya, who is arguably the most beautiful, flawless, charismatic woman on the planet. Does that make you jealous? Kind of. (laughs) Who's the hot couple? Ooh, the hot couple. Even though people have a crush on Tom Holland, Zendaya and Tom Holland are the hot couple for some unknown reason. I mean, I could probably tell you a thousand reasons why they're the hot couple. They are a pretty flawless couple. So we're going Tom Holland and Zendaya. What is the hot look? Like fashion-wise, head to toe, in your tween community, what is the hot look? Well, we definitely have like a few like brands that we always wear. But for the stuff that we're wearing right now is definitely like baggy sweatpants with like a crop top, ripped jeans with a, with a, like a cool sweatshirt from an expensive brand, like <gasps> all of that. Lululemon pants, Aviator Nation, all the stuff. What's Aviator Nation? Is that like my esprit? I said, I have no idea. Okay. But everyone's loving it. Oh, what are the expensive brands? Like, because when I was a tween, if you had guests, you were the hot shit. So what is the version of that now? So we have a couple brands that everyone's like wearing right now. People would think it's Gucci and Louis Vuitton, but it's actually different. Lululemon, Aviator Nation, like Roller Rabbit, all of that. Those three are like the top three brands that everyone's dying for. I've literally never heard of Roller Rabbit. What is, it's like you described like a mom yoga pant and then two brands I've never heard of. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. What is the hot denim? Definitely like pretty much like ripped baggy jeans with like, with like a black belt with like holes in it. Is like definitely the jean style. <laughs> You're like describing an emo band in 2001. Okay. What's the hot hairstyle? The hot hairstyles are probably like straight, like straight hair, maybe some like, maybe some like cute strokes. But one hair color and hairstyle that people are definitely dying for are probably like wavy, like, like blonde hairs with like brown streaks and stuff. People are dying for that. Wait, like a low light Harper, like a dark and light chunky highlight? Pretty much. What? We're like Christina Aguilera circa dirty? Kind of. Oh, did you get that reference? A little bit. Okay, I love that. Okay, moving on. What are the hot braces? Are we still doing seasonal color bands? Have we evolved? We've kind of evolved to that for some reason. People actually aren't really into braces anymore, but whenever they do have to get braces, it's definitely kind of like light green or like blue, like sage for the green is like sage green and then like ocean blue. And then the color bands, I don't know if people are doing those anymore. Oh my God. I, I, I'm obsessed that you just described the hot braces as sage green. I mean, we're getting real specific here and that's what I came to you for, Harper. Who's the hot TikToker? Ooh, the hot TikToker. Well, there are definitely a lot of hot TikTokers, but as you might know, the ones the most followed is definitely like Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Rae. They're Mm. definitely really like hot, but there's this one guy. One guy, he's also a YouTuber. I don't know if you've heard of him. His name is Mr. Beast. 
And he's like one of the most popular people on the internet right now. What? I've heard this name, but I have no idea who this person is. This guy basically gives out like a hundred million dollars to some random guy he found on the street in Las Vegas. Okay. So Mr. Beast and Roller Rabbit are officially on my list of things I need to look into after this call. Um, who is the hot singer? Ooh, the hot singer. Well, there's definitely a few, like, I, it used to be like BTS and stuff, but people aren't really into them anymore. So oh. I think, I mean, honestly, they're just kind of old, but for some reason, <laughs> people are definitely like falling for like, um, I think people are like falling for like, like Katy Perry and like Nicki Minaj and Lizzo. People are definitely buffing them. What? Katy Perry is like an elderly person to you, no? Well, only her song. There's all. There's one song that everyone loves for some reason. I mean, I kind of love it too. Her teeny. What is it? So, have you ever heard of sped up music? Uh, I I think I could put together what that means. So people basically go on Apple Music, play Katy Perry "Teenage Dream" sped up version. Oh my God. Tweens are now discovering Katy Perry and playing her music sped up and that's the hot shit? Apparently. That's all I really needed to know from you. What is the hot text acronym? Is it LOL, OMG? Um, it's definitely um, LAMO, like L-M-A-O. Laughing my ass off? Yep. Hey, where's my applause sound effect for knowing that? I'm LMAOing at all of your answers. That's what's the hot shit tween edition. Oh, yeah. What's that hot shit? So what did you think of Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles while we're talking about couples? Um, let me get my let me get my take on that. I mean, honestly, to me, I mean, Harry Styles, some people think he's kind of like he's kind of he's hot. But for me, honestly, he's not that cute. So <gasps> I'm honestly like not that jealous of their couple. Honestly. Wait a minute. Why is he not that cute to you? I don't, I don't know. He's just like, I just really like not into his like choice of the way he will style his hair. I'm, I'm not into it. I can't. It's his hair that bothers you. Yeah, it's the hair. It's just like the general presence of him. I like his music. His music's good. Okay. It's just. Okay. Him. So I'm not really, I'm okay with them being a couple. I mean, like. If I had the chance to date Harry Styles or, like, Tom Holland, I would definitely choose Tom Holland over him in a second. Wow, wow, wow. We are learning so much. That's fine. You take Tom Holland, I'll take Harry Styles, and then we don't have to fight about it, okay? Yeah. Is Megan Trainor a thing? I mean, now that I know that you're into Katy Perry, how do you feel about Megan Trainor? Oh, she definitely made made this new song that's going around TikTok, Made You Look. Now Megan Trainor is, like, the hip thing. People are bringing about bringing back all about that base. Like Megan Trainor's coming back. <gasps> so if you have a smash on TikTok, that can bring your whole catalog back. Apparent, yeah. Wow, I know that song. I got my Gucci on. Gucci on. Don't need no Louis Vuitton. But even with nothing on, I made you look. I made you look. Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, you and I should get together and record some TikToks. No? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Is Snapchat dead? Yes. Okay. Rank these social media platforms in coolness. TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram? And which is the least cool? So, like, the coolest 100% is TikTok. The, like, the middle one people are still talking about, Instagram. But the one, honestly, Facebook is, like, a no. That's what, like... (gasps) That's like what my grandma's on. Facebook is a no. (laughs) I love that your grandma's out dating on Facebook. Uh That hot dating app, Facebook. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I heard you. I got it. I will will delete my my Facebook accounts immediately. Yeah. I feel like I I just made you rank those in, in coolness, but coolness might not be a cool word. So maybe you can help me with my grasp of the English language, Harper. I'm going to tell you some tween slang. You tell me what it means, please. All right. You ready? CEO. CEO is basically like meaning like you're the best at this. You're like awesome at this. Like, for example, like people might comment on Charlie D'Amelio's post. You are the CEO of getting TikTok followers. Got it. E-boy or e-girl. 
Okay, e-boy and e-girl is a sort of style that used to go around in, like, the 2000s, but now it's kind of done. It's basically, like, another word for, like, gothic, emo, dresses all in all dark. That's basically what an e-girl is or e-boy. Oh, got it. Okay, high key. High key is basically, like... People used to say, like, I low-key want to go to this party, but now people are changing and, like, I high-key want to go to this party. I really want to go to this party. Ooh, I high-key want to record a TikTok dance with you to Megan Trainer's Made You Look. Did I use that properly? Of course. Okay, TFW. Okay, TFW is basically short for that feeling when, like, how I talked about Lamo. Um, It's TFW. That feeling when, like, you get off of school early. Oh, so I could send that in a text. Definitely. TFW. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sending me. Okay, so sending me is kind of, like, the same thing as, like, I'm dead whenever you're, like, whenever you hear something really funny. Like, like for example, this this drama between, like, this drama that we just talked about is sending me. Oh, uh, the drama between Hailey Bieber and I already forget who <laughs> the drama between Hailey Bieber and Selena Gomez is sending me. Yes. Oh, uh, perfect. Okay, last one. Skirt. S-K-R-R-T. What does that mean? So skirt is kind of like it's kind of in like your terms. It's kind of referring to like like the sound of a car, but whenever people use it, like Oh my gosh, whenever you saw your crush, you skirt away. Oh, it's like moving fast. Yeah. Oh, okay. So when I see Harry Styles, I skirt towards him. Apparently. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> You're skirting in the opposite direction. Yeah. All right. I feel like we've talked a lot about things from your generation, but we haven't covered things from mine. So, Harper, I'd like to list a few things from the 90s, which is when I grew up. You tell me what you think they are. Okay. Okay. Let's play That's So 90s. Walkman. Oh, gosh. Walkman seems like some, like, some kind of like Michael Jackson or something, some kind of thing that you guys were into, some kind of like hit song that people for some reason liked and now is like old and no one knows what that is just like me so it's a song yeah Mm. okay yellow pages yellow pages oh my gosh this like i have no idea i this seems like something that you would say in like a conversation or like i don't know i honestly (laughs) yellow pages okay you have no clue you've never heard of yellow pages no Mm. okay kramer Kramer? Yes. Oh, my. Okay. I can do this. Um, <laughs> Honest, like, in the 2000s, it sounds like some kind of new skin skincare brand, but in <laughs> your... But Kramer, I don't know, is that, is that like... I don't know, is that like a dance or something? Or, or something that you put in coffee? <laughs> You know? <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Cassette. What? Cassette. Cassette. Oh, gosh. Okay. Cassette. I don't know. Is that like, I don't know. Is that some like closing brand that, that, was, in, that was in back then? Cassette. I don't know. Is that like some like code closing brand? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> what great guess. Chris Kirkpatrick. Is that like is that is that like the Tom Holland of the nineties? Oh, he would be very flattered to hear you say that. Let's go with that, Tamagotchi. Oh, okay. I actually actually know what these are because my dad tried to get me to play with one, but I said that's so nineties. So it's actually <laughs> this like toy that kids used to play with that had these like animals that could basically like you have to like feed them, and if you didn't feed them, they like. Out, like were like all smelly and like some of them actually like died which was insane so yes correct you got one harper okay i have a few more a pager a pager what is a pager oh my gosh okay so a pager for me what i'm gonna guess a pager is is um like like something that you can send since I don't think you guys had, like, good, like, iPhones, is that something that you guys could, like, send messages on? 
I'm going to give that to you. And yes, we absolutely did not have good iPhones in the 90s. We had rotary phones, but I'm going to give you that. A pager, you're pretty close. Okay, last but not least, Monica Lewinsky. Okay, I feel like, oh my gosh, I've heard of the name Monica Lewinsky before. I Is she like, she's either like, is she like a singer or an actress <laughs> that you guys liked? I don't know. I feel like it's like, I feel like it's one of those because I feel like I've heard her name before. Yeah, she's pretty famous. I'm not for singing or acting, but I'll let your mom explain that one to you. And that's how you play That's So 90s. Yes. Great job, Harper. You really sanded me with that. <laughs> Did I say that right? Close enough. Okay. Harper, I cannot thank you enough for your time today. You are amazing. I'm not sure if you made me feel young and vibrant or extremely geriatric, but either way, I'm so grateful. Can you be my official tween correspondent? Like, can I call you back next time I have a pressing Haley Bieber or Tom Holland related question? Totally. The phone's always open. Perfect. And for the record, this is your mother's phone? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Harper. Go get to school. I'm so grateful for your time. This was so fun. So fun. Okay. How do we say bye in tween? Peace, girly. Peace, girly. Harper, everybody, my official tween correspondent. Harper's going to keep us all relevant, everybody. And speaking of staying relevant, I'm answering your questions that you had to call me on the telephone to ask. I'm checking my voicemail, and who knows what might be revealed. That's next. Come back so we are back, and while you were listening to ads, my technical producer, Rob, just pointed out the sheer condescension in Harper's voice when I knew anything. Listen to this. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Harper. You are a legend. God, I love her. She's coming back for sure. She's going to be a reg. All right, it's time to hear from people my own age, people who know how to pick up a telephone, place a long-distance phone call, and leave a message like it's 1998. Let's check my voicemail. Check, check, check your voicemail. My name's Sophie. I'm from Montreal. I have a two-year-old boy. Have you ever had to disappoint a grandparent? <laughs> uh, we're leaving for vacation in um, two weeks and my mother-in-law's babysitting and my mom's really upset that she's not the one babysitting. It's the best decision for my family as I don't feel she has the physical ability to babysit my kid for a week, but she's sad and disappointed. And even though I know it's the best decision for us, it's still hard. So don't know if you've had a similar situation. What would you do? How would you handle it? Love your podcast and all your content, by the way. Thank you. Oh, Sophie from Montreal. I feel you on this. And I just want to say, first of all, congratulations to you for taking a vacation without your child. Anyone who leaves their child at home with a grandparent, with a re relative, with anyone competent and takes a vacation themselves, like you're going to be married for longer than the rest of us. Your husband will never Gerard PK you. I'm telling you, like that is the best thing that you could ever do for your relationship. So I'm so happy that you're going on a vacation. Um, have I ever disappointed a grandparent? My God, I, I disappoint grandparents all the time. I feel like I'm constantly letting the grandparents down, like I'm not FaceTiming enough, I'm not sending enough pictures, but I don't live in the same city as either of the grandmas. Like, my mom is in town this week to help with my kids, and whenever she comes, she is a literal savior. My mother is like the second coming of Christ, but small and Jewish. I swear to God, when I saw her walk out of the airport doors this trip, I was so desperate for someone to help me with the kids. I wasn't feeling well. They weren't feeling well. I watched her walk out those little doors with her little suitcase as if in slow motion. And I swear to God, I heard this playing from the heavens. Did you 
my mom really is the only grandparent who is, like you said, who is physically able, I think, to handle all three of my kids. Like, my dad will come to town and say, like, I got this, and I'll go away for five minutes and hear screaming. I'll come down the stairs, and my dad is just reading the newspaper in one room while my boys gouge each other's eyes out in the other. Like, I understand there are some grandparents who just don't have it like the others. And I do feel what you're saying, Sophie, like the jealousy from both sides. You know, we will spend Christmas with one set of grandparents, and I know the other ones can feel hurt. It's such a balancing act for sure. So what I'll say to you is that you're so lucky to have two sets of grandparents who are both A, capable of looking after your kids, and B, sounds like they want desperately to help look after your kids. Like, that is so lucky. And I know you're in a tough situation, but in the big picture, you're living the dream. And you have to make the best decision for your son. And if that means sending him to your mother-in-law's for the week that you're going to be away, you have to do that. Here's what I would do. This is a week. So, you know, put him with the grandparent that's going to do the best job for a full week and tell your mom next time he'll go to her. Just kind of make it seem like you're you're taking turns. And then the next time, just send him to your mother for like a weekend or like a, a night. You know, like give her her time, but make it shorter. And hopefully you trust her enough for that short period. And my God, think of all the things that you could do. If you have grandparents fighting over looking after your kid, the world is yours. You can go to Rolling Rabbit and buy all the clothes you want. I don't know. So I'm kind of jealous, Sophie. You're in a, it's a conundrum, I understand, but I wish I was in the same thing. Related, unrelated. My sister recently told me that in her will, she chose her sister-in-law to take her kids if she and her husband tragically die. I have never been more offended. I was like, excuse me? Why wouldn't you put me in the will as the next of kin? Like, why wouldn't you trust me with your children, who I love, my niece and nephew, I love them. And my sister was like, I think you have a lot on your plate. And I was like, yes, but I am fully capable. I could take care of them. I was so offended. So anyways, we were arguing over the death, hypothetical death of my sister. But I understand how your parents feel. At the end of the day, I think you're doing the right thing. Ah, I love that question, Sophie from Montreal. And please leave me your voicemail messages. Ask for advice. Because, you know, if there's anyone that you want advice from, it's me, an elderly mother of three who's been sick for a decade telling you how to live your life. (sighs) The number to leave me a voicemail is in the description of this episode. So get in there, leave me a voicemail, and I'll answer it live on next week's show. And that's our show. Wow, congratulations. (laughs) Thank you to Harper for her insights and low-key condescension. We've never felt older. Thank you for listening and subscribing and reviewing. I am high-key grateful to all my CEOs out there. And I'm going to go skirt out of here to watch some videos by Mr. Beast. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk next Thursday. Peace, girlies. Is that what she said? Is that what I'm supposed to say? Yeah. Peace, girlies. Phone the Fan was created by our mom, Jessie Crookson. The executive producers are Jessie Crookson and Jason Yanba. The technical producer is Rob Perra. The amazing theme song and sexy interludes are by Jay Melanowski from Badwin Sound Clash. Phone a Friend is part of the ACAST Creator Network. Credits are by us, Ray Gatika and Rio Gatika. We're her kids. That's crazy, right? Wow, you're still listening? Okay, see you next week. <laughs>